Hello, thank you so much for coming to this Sashiko live streaming. Um, welcome back to myself as well. And I, I apologize for the last week for canceling it in the last moment. Well, I didn't, I don't think I left the schedule. So you may found that it was missing. Um, I wasn't feeling well, so I apologize for canceling that. It is my intention to come back and do it every week. And this is the restarting it. Uh, let me check the audio first. Yep, that's good. This is the live streaming where I talk about Sashiko while doing Sashiko stitching. Um, I will not hide anything. It is the kind of the thing that I would like to show what I do in front of the camera without editing, without modifying. <clears throat> Uh, at the same time, this is not the lecture, webinar, tutorials, or workshops, or class, so I will not answer the question for the technical perspective. I will not show how to do it, I will not answer those questions, but I'd like, I would like to talk about the cultural or story side of the Sashiko while doing Sashiko. So if you have any questions, please leave the comment. <clears throat> Hope you're feeling better. Thank you so much. I am feeling a little better, a little better. Um, it's not really fully recovered, but I think I'm good enough to do live streaming. Thank you, Lily Sound. I'm doing good. Okay. Well, I I really wanted to try to do the live streaming on Thursday. I canceled the meeting during the day for the Thursday, and I was waiting until the night if I could do it. I could not really get up from the bed and then even edit it here. I couldn't even leave the comments on the community section, so it's... I was doing something, I guess. I don't think it was COVID. I mean, I got test... I did not get even fever. I got negative too, so... I don't know what was going on, probably stress, um, maybe a lot of things, but... I will start stitching. Okay. Thank you for coming back. There's a little secret. Thank I really appreciate you coming here today. So I have a little secret. I mean, there's no like it's not that secret secret, but when I <laughs> When I feel very, very sick, when I feel a little weak, I guess, fragile, I have a little tendency to connect small fabrics. <clears throat> this is something I would like to kind of talk today, but it is something, it is something my mother and I do similarly. My mother and I are very, very different. We have very different perspective. We have very different view to Sashiko. We have different preference. What we make is completely different. At the same time, some of the things are quite similar. And today I would like to talk about that as well. So th those are the kind of... <laughs> When I feel sick, when I have a little, how can I say that? When I don't feel right. Uh, the same times, when I have a chance to get up, when I have a chance to get up, I stitch. Uh, but sashiko itself is not really a good thing for me to do while I'm doing the, I'm being in the bed and coming up and do the sashiko because I need the rhythm. And in order to get a rhythm, somewhat good health is required you don't want to go back to bed when you feel sick if you were in the rhythm so it's it's really really the small thing I, I usually don't do it when I feel better but this time I really felt something was necessary and I kept patching those small vintage fabric something that you cannot we cannot probably use it as is 
and I decided to stitch on that today a little bit. I might go back to this um, regular, not a regular, um, not a tedious, <laughs> not a tedious, um, not a boring, regular, regular Asanoha patterns a little bit later, but at the same time, I was expanding this fabric little by little, and then I re realized that it might be a good idea to keep stitching on that. As much as I don't like, as much as I don't like the saying that Sashiko is meditative stitching or Sashiko is Zen, Sashiko is the healing stitching, I don't like the saying. I don't want to use I don't want to use Sashiko to promote meditation, Zen, or healing because that's our choice. Sashiko originated. Sashiko is originated from the stitching out of out of choices so by putting our value into sashiko more than necessary it may change the form over time and i don't like that at the same time it is very 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 true that sashiko has a perspective sashiko has the outcome of meditation and healing <clears throat> and one of the things is that running stitch itself is, of course, good for the he healing or meditation. Uh, this is not my word, but somebody said like mending is not actually mending the fabric itself, but mending ourselves. And I don't think that was for Sashiko per se, but I feel the same way. That by mending it, we can mend something else we carry within so that's a very good thing but my mother and i have this tendency to collect all of these small pieces that we did not use for the big piece and we use that when we well we sometimes don't use it but when we have a chance to use it we connect them to see if we can use it as the fabric again so those small pieces itself, those small pieces itself, well, this one is actually a good shape, a good square, so it can be used for the patches or, you know, it, this is a very good piece. At the same time, like, this one is very, very, very small, and I don't know what to use for, and it's not even square, perfect square. It's not even rectangle. So those are probably trash in a bigger sense at the same times we don't really put that into the trash bin instead we try to we enjoy not even try to we enjoy connecting that together it's not even layering it yet at this moment it's not layering it just connecting and i don't know if this is called sashiko to be honest it can be, it can be called sashiko, but at the same time, this is not the sashiko we practice. And some of the sashiko artisans did not like this process because it is too focusing on the mending or reusing the fabric. <clears throat> but my mom and I both resonate ourselves with the fabric that is so small, sort of useless as is, yet there is a po like we want to see the possibility within. So I see that same thing for those who worry about their stitching, especially after my taking my workshop. Some of them may be thinking that their stitches are not great or then they might not be talented and it, it is a very important process to go through that at the same time there are no such a thing as 
waste uh, in fabric as well as in the life itself, I guess. This is the saying I was telling to myself, and this is saying that probably my mother was telling herself, but we just need a place or person, opportunities to be used as the valuable thing. And that's how we try to remember that when we feel fragile or when we feel weak. So the connecting is like expanding the field, expanding the fabric by using the sort of kind of trash-ish. Those are the fabric that I cannot even sell. <laughs> it's, it's disappointing if you find this kind of small, not square fabric in the pile of vintage fabric. The fabric itself is great, but you know, this is a little too much to price it on. But I don't want to waste it. So, and I kept stitching. Uh, the previous week, I was not doing much of the things on the website. Uh, I minimized, I'm not minimized, I reduced the amount of my work. Instead, I kept stitching, but not the stitching like this running stitch, but I was stitching to expand the fabric. Well, I'm preparing for the Japan trip coming this November. And one of the biggest uh, purpose to go to Japan is to spend a lot of time with my mother, Keiko. Um, she is, <laughs> from Sashiko perspective, she is a very, very talented. Um, she's the talented artist who can probably teach us a lot of things. As the mother, it can be a nightmare, but, you know, that's a different perspective, so. And we are very different in terms of the design, how to approach to the Sashiko. At the same time, we both feel quite insecure about ourselves or what we do. And we sometimes reflect ourselves on the fabric. So, so like th this can be like a broken pieces for that matter and stitching is the process to both expand the field as well as as the result mend i don't want to use the mending as the only purpose of sashiko but at the same time it is a good result of stitching I hope it makes sense. I hope you have something for yourself to do while you feel weak, fragile. It is good to have something at the same time. Well, I will probably stop doing this after this. It is quite embarrassing <laughs> to show this process. I thought I would be doing okay because this is the only stitching I have been doing last. Since I got sick, I have been only stitching this. So I thought it might be a good idea to do the live streaming. I sometimes did in the Japanese live stream before, but probably the first time doing so in English one. So, and as I speak, as I stitch, I feel a little embarrassing is probably the word for that like showing the messy house to my friends it's okay to do it it is natural like i'm not really trying to fake what i am but having you when you have your friend to the house you might want to clean a little bit and i think this one is more like clean version of my house and <laughs> this is more like messy version of the house so as i speak it's kind of hmm, it's a little bit uncomfortable not uncomfortable well 
embarrassing, I guess. It's not something I would like to do when I feel much better. Uh, I forgot announcement. Well, <laughs> I forgot announcement. I'm sorry about that. I will repeat that at the end of this live streaming, but I do have two workshop coming this spring. One is in April and one is in June. The one in June, like April is sold out at this moment. Uh, it has, it had, a, I think it got sold out way before, uh, but I will be having a lecture and I believe it is open to the public. And it is happening in the Bennington, Vermont. It is, I, I really would like to talk about the workshop after that, because this is my first time to teach in the academic setting. Yeah? Yes, this is my first time to teach in the university or academic setting, higher education system. And by using the grant, I could, we could, they could offer the workshop with a very, very, very lower pricing. So it's kind of a win-win situation. I did not have to lower my fees, yet I, we could offer the workshop with much, much lower fees. So it is one way for me to start looking for what is the possibility of doing it. It's a great thing, right? Like if I can offer the workshop with lower price, that's awesome. At the same time, this is the pricing that I would need to somewhat sustain this. So if I can get the grant support, well, I probably have to make it be at some point. And the word you may one word, one of the words you may want to use is vulnerable. But vulnerable, yes, it is the word for that, vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable is one word. It's, I was, I was broken already. I was not easy to get broken. Well, it is the word for that, yes. I am quite vulnerable all the time, though. <laughs> you may realize that I might be a different person somewhere, but... In reality, I'm not that difficult. I try to be difficult as much as I can, but not really. Are they? Oh. Okay, let's go back to this one. It's much healthier. And there are still, like, uh, there's still seed available for the workshop in Minnesota. So the June 28th to 30th is in Minnesota, Minneapolis. The first time doing so in the Middle West. I would say Middle West. Chicago area, Minneapolis is the Middle West. Is it Middle West? I think it's Middle West. But yeah, like I, my workshop, 80% of, not 80, almost all the workshops I do is in the East Coast. Like, including Florida. And I did once in the West Coast in California. Um, but for some reason, for some reason, a lot of workshop I offer is on the east coast i don't know why well atlanta is also east coast phoenix is probably the west coast but not that well that was called com anyway um it is the first time for me to offer the such a workshop in the middle middle west Ooh, around that area michigan illinois Minnesota, 
the Kana area. So I'm pretty excited to be there. And that will be three days workshop. And I wrote the article about explaining about the difference between the workshop I offer, what is the core and essence and application and practice, what is the difference between the one day workshop and three days workshop. Um, I explained it here and there at the same time as, as this is the first time I offer in the Middle West, West Middle, West, Middle West. It does not sound right, Middle West should be correct, but I will, after this live streaming, I will put the link for the both workshop as well as the blog links. So, I hope you can take a look at that. If you have not taken any workshops from me, and um, those three days workshop will be a good opportunity to um, have kind of comprehensive experience. Experience. And the same time, um, I, don't, I don't say that everybody has to take my workshop. Uh, my workshop is like a help for you to get the rhythm and core and essence. One can reach to there without taking my workshop, but that might require a lot of watching this live streaming or my videos. But that's, you know, that's... That's, that's the difference. Midwest, thank you. Midwest is the... Seems my computer doesn't want to give me an audio tonight. <clears throat> really? What? I think the audio is on. Let me double check once again. Check. It is on, I think. So, please check the computer audio. Is there a buzzing sound there? I don't think there's a buzzing sound. Let me... No, I don't think so. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that was an hour. Oh, I forgot this an hour. I, this is something I, uh, I was supposed to do in the beginning of the workshop. But anyway, that was the announcement. And I feel much better. I feel much more comfortable doing this than then doing this. Um, I even now regret that I introduced that. <laughs> Not a regret, but a little bit embarrassing. I probably should put everything behind somewhere. I'll clean later. I don't know. It's... Sashiku for me is quite ordinary stitching and the key of the Sashiku for me is the ordinary so it's like sharing sharing something very 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 ordinary for you like brushing teeth washing the dishes it can be quite embarrassing to share the scenery of you washing the dishes after <laughs> dinner. I mean, there's nothing going on there. There's not that much stuff going on. But... But stitching itself, like like this one, that's why I have to make, not have to, I would like to make the sort of the project. This is the 100 meter of us on the hop pattern. And by doing the project, that washing the dish itself becomes more like a project wise and i feel less <laughs> less ordinary for that matter i'm sorry if you've been sick if it's the same bug that i've been going around here it put me in the hospital for four days last week wow i'm sorry to hear that is that a, like a stomach bug 
he was from stomach. It, it is probably still on. I, I don't eat something heavy right now. I'm pretty scared that I might get sick again. It's not like a food poisoning or... It's not like a regular stomach bug that I wanna, you know... It required, like, it comes with the fatigue. It came with fatigue. I could not get up. Like, it's very, very, it made me very, very, very sleepy. And tired. Not a fever, not a headache. And it's, it's not that significant to go to the hospital yet. And I'm getting better, so I don't know what's going on. But it might be the new bug. It's the sickest I have ever been. Wow, I'm sorry to hear that, Le Leah. Mine is not that bad as of now. I noticed that it is very hard to stitch using the rhythm and not your eyes measuring the stitches sensibly. <laughs> Quite sometimes the stitches will be pretty uneven and basically being vulnerable. Yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed that it is very hard to stitch using the rhythm and not your eyes measuring the stitches as for quite sometimes the stitches will be pretty uneven. And that's basically, it is. So, in my workshop, I ask pretty much everybody, well, in my teaching, for that matter, not even workshop, online class, even probably here on YouTube, I ask everybody to be vulnerable once, because in order to learn something, it's like a very, very Asian thing to say, but in order to learn something, in order to pour in, something into the cup you have to empty that cup um unfortunately many many people who want to learn sashiko are scared or not willing to empty the cup first so they have their full fully filled cup and then try to add something to enrich their drinks but because of the amount they need to enjoy the tea itself is more than one drop or two drops. I ask them to empty the cup first. Um, emptying the cup requires a lot of weakness, not a weakness, the, the vulnerability, vulnerability. And that's probably what makes people, like some people go through very, very difficult time in my workshop or in my teaching because of that. And I know, I understand that what they are asking is like a single drop of the essence of Sashiko so they can say that they know what Sashiko is. But because it's a completely different drink, it's not like adding a little sugar to the teas. We have to kind of empty it first. After that, they can choose what kind of tea they want to drink. Because, you know, we have tea for the drinking. Every day we kind of empty it at some point. Um, they thought it was a food poisoning at first, but the, the first night progressed, it just kept getting worse. I'm sorry, well, it's probably not the same bug, but it is coming from the stomach. Um, I'm still figuring out how this YouTube uh, ads. So, the best way is to have a break time like this a little bit, it has been 30 minutes. And about 30 minutes, they start saying that there's going to be ad. So there might be the ad for some people at this moment right now. So I apologize in the, in the beginning. No, 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 in the beginning. In advance. I will not talk something very significant right now. It's kind of break. If you can take a break as well, that's great. I'm going to get a little Coke. I mean, drinking Coke itself is a good uh, sign that I can have a better stomach. I'm, I'm not supposed to be drinking this, but... Well... I don't drink alcohol.
Okay, let's go to the second half of the live streaming. I will not go over 10 o'clock today because, again, I will take care of myself a little bit better. <laughs> again, then I shouldn't be drinking Coke. I completely forgot about it. I like drinking Coke when I do live streaming and there we go. All right, I'm gonna go back to the second half. By skipping one live streaming, I kind of lost the, the line of what to talk about, so if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer that. At the same time... Oh! I don't... Well, it's for you who are here for the YouTube live streaming. I really appreciate that. I shared that on the Patreon already, so I think it's okay to share that. One of the pieces we made together in Japan, not only myself, not only my mother, um, it's a collaboration of the the Sashiko student, well, I don't want to call them student anymore, more like a rising Sashiko artisans in Japan that I stitch together often or every month. Um, that jacket is going to be in the museum um, in London, Williams Morris Museum. And it's, it's happening this weekend, I guess. It, it, it's not happening. It opens this weekend for quite a long time. Uh, so please, please go to the Williams Morris Museum website. Um, the main theme of that exhibition is Minge, and they decided to. Um, they have a lot of you know exhibition ex exhibited pieces, and they decided to have one of ours among many many other pieces. Uh, it is very really much our privilege to be <laughs> not be there. I, I'm not gonna be there. But our pieces will be there, and that's really, really our privilege. It's an honor. So, I will talk about that when I get a photos from them. I will make an Instagram post when I get a photo from photo, photos from them. I don't know how many people are from um, the Europe in this live streaming. Well, probably no, nobody right now. It's in the morning in London right now, so probably nobody's watching it from London. But... It's gonna be a good, interesting exhibition. The next... <laughs> Minge is probably... The next Japanese word some may pick up as the trend. So... It may be a good idea to start checking the word. Minge is a little bit scary word to discuss because there are so many um, sort of experts in this topic and I am no way close to the expert. Um, so I am a little bit hesitant to talk about it, but at the same time, as Sashiko can be categorized as the Minge, part of the Minge, um, it is, according to their voice, it is very really important to have the voice from actual people who does that, who do that. <clears throat> so Minge movement itself happened, ooh, 150 years ago? Probably more than that. 18 something. <laughs> and it is from the kind of past. There's a museum in Japan for that movement. And 
we can find a lot of traditions passed to passed on, passed down to today's generations. So there are many, many artisans or artist craftsmen who carries that spirit. <clears throat> At the same time, because of the characteristic of the Minge, which they, uh, Williams Morris Museum's creator, did a fantastic job to translate it. Um, they translate Minge as the art without hero, and that is very, very good. Well, unknown craftsmanship was one way to be translated, but art without a hero is a very kind of cool way to translate it. And it is, in order to be defined as the Minge, not, not defined as, there, there are six or seven, eight, eight criteria to be sort of categorized as the Minge. And one of the categorized, significant categories is the anonymous. Anonymous. Ano anonymous. An it has to be anonymous. Like, if I say that I am the art, I am the Minge artist, that phrase itself is quite contradictive. So the jacket we tried to, not try, the jacket we had sent to the museum has 16 artisans collaborating together to make one piece and we have everybody's name written down, but not going to be introduced as. And to be honest, probably only my mom can tell who, whose pieces were. So it is somewhat art without a specific hero. It is the art with many, many heroes. So art in the western value can be the way to express themselves so in order to have the art the person who made it the artist is probably a very important element of course you know it's not only japan thing to have the art without heroes i'm not saying that it's only it only happened in japan but when we talk about the art in general Usually, it comes with the artist. In this Minge movement, it came without, and it, it came without the specific artisan, I mean artist name. And as much as it's really, really challenging to discuss about the Minge in English, or even in Japanese for that matter, it can explain a lot of it can explain a lot of Japanese characteristic, Japanese philosophy, Japanese culture for that matter, that I am experiencing difficult time to explain in the live streaming. Again, Minge is not equal to Tashiko. And that's it's too much to simplify. It's another simplification if I say Sashiko is very close to Minge or vice versa. But there are quite big similarities, and that exhibition itself is going to be a very, very good one because it's the Western approach to the Minge in the setting of museum, and it's not. It's quite rare. I wish I could go. <laughs> I wish I could go, but... Well, I guess Europe is not far from the East Coast. But... Are they? It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful jacket. Thank you. Yeah, 
well, the first debut of that jacket to the public eyes was the um Japan tour 2013 last year's Japan tour Sashiko Japan tour um we kind of exhibited that jacket so that everybody, everybody can watch and touch until that it was kind of not a hidden but it was not available to watch unless they go to the I, I, unless they go to my mother's house and as we ex, as we introduced to the general public in 2013 it is more easy for us to talk about it and it is okay for us to exhibit there too so it's going to be fun it's going to be fun and i am very much looking forward to learn how this ming -e will turn out <laughs> again i i may not go into the deep discussion about ming -e because i am not I need to read more books, I need to touch more pieces before I start discussing about it. But I don't approach Minge as the kind of study or academics. I approach Minge as a craftsman, I guess, the one who make full stitch. So, there might be a little difference. Were the group of people in the photo the one who stitched them? Were the group of people in the photo or the ones who stitched it? Uh, not necessary, not necessary. <clears throat> I don't know some of the people's face, to be honest. No. Because the connection we have right now is over internet. And I had a fortune to meet some of them in Japan, in the, like last year. At the same time, there are some people who... I think there are some people who have not seen their face yet. I know their name, but... Because of that, we don't have photos with them, everybody in that. Some of them are there, but not everybody. Uh, was the jacket made for this exhibition or did your mother have the idea of group project independently? Uh, this, the, this jacket was not, not made for this exhibition. Uh, and also, this is not a single project. It is a jacket from our continuous project. So we have a belief that we have a belief we we believe we believe that once we can stitch in the rhythm, um, no matter how different the rhythm is, the result can unite with harmony. And in order to sort of prove that, at the same time, in order to prove what I always say, that anybody can be the Sashiko stitcher, like, like literally, anybody can stitch like we do, uh, we try to offer sort of the stitching, ex stitching opportunities to as many people as possible. So in order to achieve those two goals, that if we can... Sashiko can be harmonious when we stitch in the rhythm, although the, the rhythm might be different, as well as that they can be like the Sashiko artisans I know, or like us, when they practice enough, we try to involve as many, at this moment only Japanese though, because, because of the log logistics, and it requires a lot of work, and my mother is happy to do that, and I'm not ready for that. But anyway, uh, right now it's only in Jap Japan, but those who took my workshop, in those who learned the unshin from me 
in Japan can participate that project and we have been doing that for last five years yeah the first the idea was we we came up with this idea in 2019 it was even before COVID yes in 2019 and the jacket which is going to be in the exhibition is the one we started in 2020 after the COVID yes and came out in 2022 and they are there's another piece that was planned in 2011 2021 and then came out in 2023 and now there's one four pieces or five pieces going on together to be come out either this year or hope like some of them should be coming out this year but sometimes um next year hopefully uh, this is not uh, one of the promise I made is that this is not for sale we are not gonna put any price on that we will put the price when somebody asks us if we can make the similar things but the jacket itself doesn't have any price on that we will not calculate the price until we get at those inquiries and you know we don't know if we can make it together because we need them to be part of that and then we can talk to them how much they are willing to stitch if that was the work then we can finally put the price on um, but it is more like mm, like a life work <laughs> life work it's it's very 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 much uh, the fortune I have that I don't have to work for money that much at this point so I can do this kind of leisure thing to do you know making Sashiko jacket that big of Sashiko jacket with promise that we will not sell is quite risky not a risky quite stupid <laughs> not a stupid quite hmm Adventitious, adventure, adventure. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it's a good idea to not to put the price on that. The goal is to have the exhibition at some point uh, for th that purpose, like the Sashiko exhibition with the Sashiko pieces we make at some point, at somewhere in the future. And that's gonna those those uh, stitchery will be the main piece how do you put the price on something like that um putting the price itself is not that difficult it, it's simply i don't want to say simply but it, it is calculating the workload for each artisans including my mother and myself and calculate not calculating like uh, offering the reasonable amount of the compensation for each stitches then we can come up with the pricing i mean it's not gonna be cheap of course at the same time at some point pricing is quite important to consider because i believe that in order to be sort of professional their work has to be compensated at some point and so if somebody wants to have that kind of jacket we can make it from scratch with asking help with actual prices or like compensation or you know fees so it is not impossible to do it um but it's not the goal of that it's not the last it's not a goal for that
Yeah, but I hope that you, I can do the exhibition in the U.S. as well. It's something. <laughs> There's so many kind of sashiko and, you know, there are so many answers for the sashiko. Um, but what they made, what they're making right now is quite, quite astonishing. It can surprise the world. In some sense, the jacket is priceless or even, or very valuable, well, valuable, since it has the emergence of 14 different st stitches. It is. Um, it is very, it's priceless for that, yes. It is very priceless. So it, it is not kind of, hmm. It's kind of difficult to put into words. It is not cool to think about money or price. At the same time, it is really important to pay attention to that perspective. After all, it, I want to make it kind of sustainable. We made this jacket and I don't want to make it as the end of the story. Uh, it is my, not even my, it is our goal to say that this can be made again. If it is valued. So. Well, this is my messed up brain. I was born in the Sashiko family where they made a business out of doing Sashiko. So pricing is always sort of my challenge. But pricing is very, very important <laughs> because by doing a wrong pricing, we can destroy a lot of things. Sustainability can be broken. A company itself can be broken. And trust from the customers can be broken. A lot of thing is, like if I put too high pricing for the margin without the story, um, it can look like that I'm doing for just for the money. The margin itself is, of course, you know, we have to make margin to make a living. At the same time, what is the appropriate margin is very, very, very difficult and we have to not a have to, it is very important to balance it. And again, the goal is to make it sustainable. The goal is to keep doing it. The goal is not to be rich. The goal is not to, you know, drive the Rumble Guinea after this. It's, it's not my goal at all. At the same time, it is my goal to not to worry about my life so much or our life so much so it's just a balance i know we have to assign a value to things even the mona lisa has a value it just seems incredible that you can monetize something so beautiful um i think we can i'm not saying i can i think i can well i i Yes, I can. I, I, it's not in my thinking. It, it's just simple logic. Building the logic. And convincing comes. But, but in order to value that, it has to be art. <laughs> so that's going to contradict to my philosophy too, right? It, it has to have somewhat art. Like explanation can be art. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> uh, I'm about to end the live streaming. It's five minutes to ten. And I now remember what I was going to talk about last week. After talking about different things for the last 55 minutes, I remember what I was going to talk about 
last week on Thursday when I was sick. And I will talk about it next week if I don't remember, if I don't forget. But it was about the new project called Sashiko Girls. Girls? Girls? And I will do the little bit of, I will do the little bit of briefing, not a briefing, like very much the introduction. I wrote that on the Instagram. So you may not know that. But let me just get the Instagram. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, nope, I cannot do that. Why is not? Just a second. Ah, come on. Ah, sorry about this. So, long story short, I will elaborate this story next time. Um, but... my friends from the Otsuchi I think it's okay for me to call them friends but they are starting a new project called Sashiko Gal Gals it's called Gals in Japanese um, it's the purpose of their project it's not my project the project made by them is it's, it's the project that they started is the project where they will try to expand the possibility of sashiko and it is probably the answer to the popular question of what is the sashiko in japan for that matter um sashiko is changing and i say that i don't like the change in english but at the same time, sashiko changes over time in Japan too, and that change itself is quite interesting. And they are trying to expand um, the possibility of sashiko by saying the expanding the possibilities. Um, there are many ways to explain how expanding it. Uh, one way is to do whatever they can think of which I don't. <laughs> I have a very strong preference and I have, like, I get many requests for the commission work to stitch on something they want me to stitch on. I, the, I say no to those offers pretty much on every request. I don't do commission work anymore because it's not, I didn't, I enjoyed some of those, but I, I enjoy some of those projects at the same time as I suffered in some of the projects more than enjoyment. So I don't do that anymore. They will do so. And their work will be like this. Some people might like it, some people might not like it. But, would uh, sorry, like this. It's the sample. It's not the product they make. It's the sample of what they do. So it's it's not a product again. It's the sample that it make, they can do, and they're starting the uh, crowd funding, funding, and also the project itself. It started from the earthquake in two thousand eleven, and I often talk about them. Um, I often talk about them 
in my lecture or my workshop uh, as the turning point of my life in doing Sashiko. And they are the people who were part of that project. And they're kind of... They, the Otsuchi Sashiko project exists and they are using the Otsuchi Sashiko project as the brand to make this kind of project. And it, it's really... I think it's a very good thing to do. So, it's the preference. And there, there will be a lot of discussion if it, it's called Sashiko. And my understanding, it is Sashiko. It is Sashiko's future, Sashiko's possibilities. And how it looks, it is not the primary criteria to call what Sashiko is. It's the preference. And I will talk about more of what I think and what is the future of Sashiko, what is the possibility of Sashiko uh, regarding what they're going to try to do. And I, that's what I was going to talk last week. I completely forgot about it today again, which is okay, which is, <laughs> which happens a lot. Okay, I think that's about it for today. Is there anything? Oh, yes, announcement. Please let me have an announcement. I will edit the description tomorrow at some point. Now, uh, for those who are watching this as the archive, I will be having the workshop in April and in June for the 2024. I don't plan to put any workshop after fall of 2024 to focus on the Japan trip, Japan tour. So this might be the last workshop I offer in person in 2024. Uh, I might I might add something if I get a request. Uh, but as of now, this is the two workshops that I... Oh, I, guess, uh, I forgot about it. There might be one in um, Brooklyn in August. Uh, but as of now, those two are the new coming workshop. And one is in the Bennington, Vermont. The workshop itself is sold out, but there will be the lecture for public. If you are nearby that Vermont, Bennington, Vermont, and I will be having a lecture. I think it's a free of charge. Uh, the lecture itself is free of charge. And I will be in Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota in June 28th to 30th. And that's the three, three days workshop. And I think they just op just opened up the uh, registration and there is the early bird deal. So if you're nearby there, if you're close to the Minneapolis, this is my first time to offer the workshop in Midwest, Midwest. So um, that might be, I'm excited to be there. Uh, I studied in the sort of Midwest, I guess. Michigan is kind of Midwest. Um, Minnesota is, I used to fly with the Northwest, if you remember Northwest, Northwest, that, well, it's now Delta, right, I guess, Northwest became Delta, uh, uh, uh. but Minneapolis was the hub for the Northwest, so I flew into Minneapolis so often, the, ah, the biggest mall, right? Anyway, sorry. Um, I will talk about it. I will talk about the Sashiko Gals next week, the possibility of Sashiko, which is going to require me to talk about what Sashiko is from that perspective. So that might be an interesting topic to listen next week. And I try my, try my best to heal, not heal. I will take care of myself a little better this week again, and then I will be able to talk about I will have the same live streaming next week as well. All right. Um, I appreciate you coming here. God, I had the towel from my... <laughs> Oops. I did not realize that until now. All right. I will be seeing... I will see you next Thursday. Thank you so much.